Hi everyone and welcome back to yet another live stream here at the Australian Reptile Park. If you haven't seen me before on uh, some of these live streams, my name is Jake and I'm one of the reptile keepers here at the park. But uh, aside from working with Elvis and a lot of snakes and tortoises and Komodo dragons, all that really fun stuff, a lot of my time is also spent right here uh, in this room in our spider world here at the park. And uh, in this room is where we keep all of our Sydney fun web spiders. And that is exactly what we've got sitting in each and every one of these jars in front of me here. There is a lot of spiders here. Now, all of the spiders sitting in front of me here now are male fun web spiders. And uh, the male fun web, I can show you on here, he's a little bit smaller than the uh, female here. You can see the female, a little bit more robust, a little bit larger, and this is where it gets very, very confusing. The male funnel web is actually the more toxic of the two. So whilst he is a little bit smaller than this girl, he is really the one that you have to worry about. The male's venom is actually six times more toxic than that of the female. So um, if you're going to be bitten by a funnel web, uh, you don't want it to be any funnel web, but uh, the male funnel web is the really bad one. And uh, he's also the one that's caused human fatalities. We have never seen a single death from a female funnel web. Uh, the male funnel web, on the other hand, has caused quite a number of deaths um, back in the day. And I say back in the day because the male funnel web has not caused a death since the year 1980. That is the year that the antivenom was released to the hospitals, uh, developed and released. And since then, we have not seen a single death, which is, of course, a fantastic result. Uh, we do not like to see uh, people dying from, from any bite or sting, uh, snakes included, funnel web spiders certainly included in that. And uh, these days, we simply don't see deaths from funnel web spiders, and that is a direct result of that antivenom and its availability. Now, we play a very large role in the production of the funnel web spider antivenom here at the Reptile Park. We were actually the, uh, the first, I guess, institution to start milking these spiders for their venom. And we have actually become the sole supplier of that venom for the production of antivenom. Now, speaking of uh, supplying venom and extracting it, I'm going to show you exactly how we milk a spider here at the Reptile Park. That's exactly why all these males are sitting in front of me here. I am about to milk some venom. And uh, it's quite a simple process. We've got all the spiders labelled. We've got where they come from, when they arrived here at the Reptile Park, because, of course, most of them do come to us via public donation. And once we get the male funnel web here, we will begin to extract his venom on a weekly basis. And that venom is what is the, uh, the start of that anti-venom process. Now, the spiders are, of course, quite grumpy. They'll stand up like this and uh, they will expose the fangs. In fact, I'll lift this male right up here. What I may even do is lift this light above so you can get a nice, close look at him there. Now, the fangs of a Sydney fun web are extremely large. On even a little male like this, those fangs are maybe close to a centimetre in length. Very, very large fangs. And of course, the venom is incredibly toxic. And that venom is what we are aiming to extract from the spider when we're milking, of course. Now we get these tiny, tiny drops forming on the end of the fang, and then all I do very simply is I'll go along with this little glass pipette. It's attached to this tube, and it acts like a little mini vacuum cleaner. It just sucks the venom off the tip of the fang as it appears. Now I'm quickly gonna do one more. We'll pop this male aside. We're gonna look at this male now. This one originates from Lizaro, right here on the central coast. But the Sydney funnel web, they are found right throughout the central coast, uh, up to Newcastle, then all the way back down through Sydney, down to the Sutherland Shire, down to about Wollongong or Nowra, and then west to Lithgow in the Blue Mountains as well. You can see there, big fangs once again, a couple of drops of venom there. You may even see a little bit of a web around the spider as well. They do cast a web like most spiders. And that's kind of where they get that name, that funnel web. They create that cylindrical, funnel-like web straight down into the ground. All right, now what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm actually gonna pop this down just to the side. I'm gonna leave that funnel web there. I can actually leave the lid off. Oh, a couple more drops, I better get those. 
I can leave the lid off because on web spider web spiders. You can also send through more questions about spiders as well. He's going to um, do a few demonstrations here of, I guess, first aid and how to catch a funnel web spider. For sure. So what we're going to do, I'm going to head over here to the ground. You can follow me down because I do have a couple more funnel webs uh, in these jars. Now, the spiders we just had a look at inside and just extracted some venom from or milks. They were male funnel webs, and I spoke a little bit about the difference between a male and a female. Well, we've actually got quite a large female right here. Now, the female, as I mentioned, they do get larger, but they are a less toxic spider uh, than that male funnel web. But still, just as, uh, just as defensive, they'll still stand up just the same, expose the fangs. They still have very, very large fangs. And uh, if you were to be bitten by a funnel web, uh, female included, it is certainly not, you know, something to, to sneeze at. They will, uh, they will still make you very, very sick. While the female may not be life-threatening, you are still going to get very, very sick. Now, I mentioned before inside that the, uh, the funnel webs we milk here at the park, most of them come to us via public donation. So people catching them as they encounter them and donating them to us here at the park. And we are very grateful that each and every person that does that, they really do keep that. Uh, venom program that we run here going and existing. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you how to catch a funnel web spider. I mentioned just before they cannot jump, they can't climb. Um, but what I'm going to do is tip this one out of the ground, out of the jar, sorry, onto the ground, and I'm going to let her walk around a little bit. Now she's been quite slow. This is about average speed for a female funnel web. She's picking up speed now, but even so, all we have to do to catch one, I get my jar, I pop it in front of the spider, and in she goes. It is quite literally as easy as that. I'll show you one more time. If I get it to walk toward the camera. And once again, grab my jar, and in she goes. As long as you are keeping those fingers and those hands away from the mouth of, mouth of the jar, um, you really are able to get that spider in there very very easily so why are we showing people like to catch them like why are we bothering showing this so if you are a responsible adult it is quite you know a good thing to know how to catch a funnel web because if you see one in your backyard you know the easy thing to do might be to run for a shoe or a rolled up newspaper and squish the spider but that spider you find in your backyard if you can safe, safely capture it as i just showed you um, you can actually donate it to us here at the park and it can become a vital member of our Venom program. So you can turn that spider that uh, turned up at your place, quite literally, into a life saver. Now, occasionally you may not have a funnel web that's walking along like that. I'm gonna pop this one back into her jar here. Quite easy to get back in there. And I'm gonna show you this one here. Now I have a hunch that this one, and it's already doing it, is it going to run around? It's going to stand up on its back legs there. I'm just going to quickly rem rem remove the spider there. It's going to stand up for me. There we go. It's going to stand up in that typical defensive stance. How about we spin her around, if we can, to face the camera. Now this really is the typical defensive stance of the Sydney Fun Web. Legs raised in the air, fangs are exposed. And as I mentioned before, those fangs are extremely large. Now, if you've got one standing up like this, that method I showed you before, where you hold the jar in front, doesn't really work. The spider's not going anywhere. In fact, they physically can't. They need most of their eight legs placed firmly on the ground in order to move in a forwards direction. So, what we do instead, we can take that same jar and uh, we just pop it over the top of the spider just like that. Now at this point, people might get excited. They might think that they've caught a funnel web and they might even, you know, get on Facebook and let all their friends know how great they are at it. But in actual fact, you've simply trapped one under a jar. You haven't quite caught it yet. There is another step to the process. Uh, what we do now is take something like this. This is just the bottom of those green Enviro bags that you get from Coles or Woolies. A piece of laminated paper or cardboard works just the same. You would slide the spider on top, just like this. It's very important you don't place your hand under the plastic here, because this is quite thin. The spider could still bite through that, but you're gonna use it to tip the spider in, and now you've averted the jar, and you have once again caught your funnel web spider. 
Now, once you've done this, a really important thing to do is pop a little bit of damp soil or potting mix or even a damp uh, ball of cotton wool into the jar and that will provide the spider with sufficient moisture, moisture and humidity and uh, that way the spider can uh, live quite happily in there and you can donate it to us here at the park. We can't milk the spider if it's dead on arrival, we need it to be alive and uh, by popping a little bit of soil in the bottom just like that is how you can assure that they are going to uh, survive for even you know, quite a number of months in the jar like that. Now, uh, this spider's already lived in here for a fair while. You can see it's webbed up there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop that spider back into her home. She can go in there. You can have another look at her on her web. And what we might do is uh, answer a couple of funnel web spider questions if we have any. Yeah, well, I would actually noticed your um, bandage there. So do you wanna go through the first aid for a funnel web spider bite? Absolutely. Very attentive there, Amanda. Yes. <laughs> so this is uh, what we call a compression or pressure immobilization bandage. And you may recognize this as being the method of first aid for any Australian snake bite. Well, just like a brown snake bite or a tiger snake bite, these also work very, very well on funnel web spider bite. And it is the recommended uh, procedure for applying first aid to a funnel web bite. What I would do if I were bitten on the finger here, and most funnel web spider bites do happen either on the toe or the finger, uh, you would wrap around the bite site, say two or three times, about the same tension you would for a sprained ankle or wrist, and I would then extend that bandage right to the top of the limb. Now I've got a watch on here today, I would get rid of that. I've also got a long sleeve shirt on, I'd just go straight over the top of the shirt. I would go right to the shoulder if you were bitten on the finger, right up there. If you were bitten on the toe, go right up to the upper thigh. You would then immobilize the limb, immobilize the victim and get them off to hospital as quickly as you possibly can. The male funnel web spider bite is nothing to muck around with. They are incredibly serious. It will be a life threatening medical situation. The ambulance will get there very, very quickly and uh, they will be aiming to get you to the hospital as fast as they possibly can because they know that the, uh, the fastest death ever recorded for a funnel web spider bite was around 15 minutes, incredibly quickly. Now that was a bite that occurred in a very young child and it did occur about 50 years ago, but there's also been an adult killed by a funnel web spider uh, in just over an hour. So it is a very fast acting, very, very toxic venom, but by applying these bandages, um, you are really buying yourself a lot of time to get yourself to hospital and get that anti-venom that you will absolutely need if you uh, are bitten by a male funnel web. Is a redback spider, does that have the same kind of first aid? Uh, it doesn't, no. The redback spider is still quite a toxic spider, um, of course, much smaller. And the method of first aid for a redback spider bite is an ice pack. Very simple ice pack. You don't need to bandage it. Just apply ice to the, uh, the bite site and then, again, seek medical attention. And I guess there's a lot of other species of spider that could be mistaken for a funnel web. So what happens if you're not sure? Yeah, if you're not sure about the spider that's bitten you, it's always best just to treat it as the worst thing it can be. If, for instance, you are bitten by a trapdoor spider, you're not gonna do any harm in bandaging the limb. Same thing for a mouse spider, huntsman spider. If you do feel like you've received a serious spider bite, take it seriously, get to hospital, and they will monitor your symptoms and very quickly be able to work out whether you've been bitten by a funnel web or not. Um, but it's always best to be in a hospital when you're going through those things. How can you tell the difference between a boy and a girl? Uh, so one of the main differences between the males and the females, as I mentioned, is their size. Um, but if we come up here, we'll also have a look at this big animatronic uh, funnel web that lives here at the Reptile Park, his name is Bob. And uh, this is a male Sydney funnel web spider. And we know that because right here on his second front leg, this isn't a leg, this is called a pedipalp. Um, but that's his first leg, that's his second leg. And then you can see here, He's got quite a large uh, spur there. Now the males, they have that spur, they use it during mating. So what we'll do when we get a funnel web here at the park, we take a close look at it, and immediately if we see that spur, we know we've got the male Sydney funnel web spider and we can start milking him for the process of uh, anti-venom production. What do they eat? Uh, so funnel webs, they're insectivores or insectivorous. They're feeding on all sorts of 
creepy crawlies that live in the backyard as well. They might eat a cockroach, a cricket, worm, millipede, whatever they can really come across, or whatever passes in front of their burrow, they're gonna run out, capture it, and then they'll eat it. How, uh, how is the anti-venom made? Uh, so what happens when we extract venom from the funnel webs, we'll send it down to Melbourne to secure us, and they will take very small amounts of that funnel web spider venom and they inject it into a large rabbit. You may have heard, of us, heard us talking about uh, snake and snake anti-venom. We use horses for the snake anti-venom, but the funnel web spider is a really large rabbit. And that rabbit will begin to produce antibodies to the venom over a period of months. And then once it has produced those antibodies, they can extract some blood from that rabbit and they will then extract the antibodies. And that is what is processed, purified, and turned into the anti-venom itself. So it is quite a long, lengthy process, and it does actually require us to milk about 150 individual spiders to make just one vial of antidote. So it's a lot of work, but of course, for anyone that's bitten by a fungal web spider, that is life-saving stuff. And last question, can they jump? They can't jump, no. So while ever they're on the ground, um, they can't jump, they can't climb up a smooth surface either. Um, they might be able to climb a little bit up something like a rock or a wooden fence, but if it's like a smooth, like colour bond fence or uh, certainly glass, plastic, they cannot get up that. Um, and quite often what happens is the funnel web spiders, the males, when they're looking for the females, they will fall into swimming pools. Because they fall in, they hit the side, they can't climb back out. They often make their way around to the skimmer basket and they go in there. So it's always a really good thing if you are cleaning your pool out, maybe you haven't checked it in a few months, it's been winter, you go to clean the skimmer basket out. Make sure you have a really thorough look because there may be a fun web spider that's uh, ended up inside there. And they can survive underwater for a couple of days as well. So just because it looks like it might be uh, not with us anymore, they can pop back to life as soon as they um, get a bit of air. So very important that even if you see a fun web spider that looks dead, still treat it with the same caution that you would for one that is running around. Now guys, I hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit about fun web spiders here with me today. You even saw um, some life-saving venom extraction or milking that we do here at the reptile park. Uh, please do, if you see a fun web um, and you are a responsible adult, attempt to catch it up. Um, donate it to us here at the Reptile Park. As I mentioned, that program relies on that. We need to be constantly uh, you know, having fun webs come into our possession. So keep that up and uh, we do appreciate each and every fun web that is donated. Now guys, we're gonna leave it there. We hope you enjoyed that uh, with us here today. And uh, as I mentioned, we are going to be doing these live streams every single weekday. So uh, stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Thank you guys.